let me let me think how I want to say this. Um, I think it was two years ago in Indian Wells when Indian Wells was played in October. I lost first round. I've been struggling a lot. I still had pain in my knee, and it was not. I, didn't see, I saw Isla and Maria after the after my match, and I was like, I just just cannot keep doing this, cannot keep playing at this level. I like bumped into you and Maria in the locker room, and I was like, I'm gonna quit tennis. Like I'm literally gonna stop. Well, Maria messaged me, and she's like, Donna's really not in a good place. Where like, where are you? And I I was around, but I didn't I didn't see you right after you finished. So I came in the locker room. Yeah, I was really struggling like that whole period and. That match was kind of like the lowest probably I've ever been. And you guys, you were like, just like, no, um, this time next year, you're going to be in a much better place. Just don't give up. Your tennis will come back. And we know that you have the level and what, what your capabilities are. And that kind of helped me a lot. I remember that so vividly because I completely knew how you were feeling, but I also was objective enough to see that I wasn't, I didn't have your emotions, but I could know that like, you're gonna get out of it sooner than you think. You told me that no, you're, you're a fighter, you're so strong mentally and you're just gonna push through and kind of gave me the confidence that I didn't have in myself at that time. When I'm going through a difficult time or a period, I think it's really important for me to have my friends around me, my families, because when you're going through a tough time, you kind of sometimes just want to be on your own. But, you know, it's important to have those people who know you very well to, one, if you don't tell them that you're going through a tough time, who will recognize that and be there, but also if you want to open up to them and, you know, just have someone to, to listen to you, maybe give advice. but. Most importantly, that you're not alone. When we're not together, we don't text as much, but I feel like I can call you and it's just like... I'm not a great texter. You're a terrible texter. But you're also, are you a good texter? Better, better than, than you. Better than me, that's not saying much. But yeah, I don't, I don't like to have friendships where I have to text you every day. No, of course, like, I feel like with our job and life, it doesn't work, but I know that like, I can just FaceTime you and we're, I can just tell you everything in like five minutes and we're like back on, yeah. like as if we saw each other yesterday. Yeah, often I say that Isla and I are like the same person. <laughs> Sometimes we're both not feeling good the day before the match and then we get together, have uh, have a dinner and let's, let's try to um, get ready for our match uh, together and uh, go through this. How would you describe each other? Okay. Um, <laughs> tough, um, funny, <laughs> like bl so blunt. Oh my God, so direct. blunt. Yeah, direct. <laughs> um, honest, um, emotional. You, you, you have that emotional side that I think a lot of people wouldn't think, but it's big. Um, and you are like, you you have like street, like you're smart in general, but you're street smart. Like <laughs> nobody's gonna get past you with like the little, you know, what they probably maybe get past me. <laughs> yeah, you're maybe a bit more naive. I'm more naive <laughs> with that stuff. My first, I'm gonna start with a bad one. I'm gonna say you're very messy. That's, th that's such a can of worms that are open. We, there's so much to elaborate, but okay. <laughs> I would. Yeah, a lot, but I'm gonna keep it very simple. Like your room, when I go into your room, I'm like, oh my God, I start cleaning. <laughs> I say you would, I would say you're really honest, really funny and kind. Really? Yeah. No, oh, I never think I'm funny. What do you mean? <laughs> like, you know, to me, it's such a compliment if someone thinks I'm funny because I truly don't think I'm funny, but I value funniness in other people so much. So to me, like, that's the biggest compliment you can give me if I'm funny. You're really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to respond. <laughs> For me, mental health is, you know, trying to stay in, in the present, not thinking too much about the past, not worrying too much about the future. Sometimes it's easier said than done, but I would say it's a work in process.
this works for me. That's another thing with mental health. I think there's not a one book that fits all. You have to figure out what works for you. And for me, figuring out who, who I am as a person, the Isla, just a person, not the player, and am I happy, am I fulfilled, then I can, you know, the, the court kind of takes care of itself and I let that, the instinct take over. The stigma about mental health is that you know, you're not allowed to show your weakness, um, especially in sport, that you're struggling with something, feeling down. You always have to show the world that you're feeling great, which is um, not the case most of the time. I feel like recently people have been talking about it more, raising awareness, and that's something that's really important, I would say. Are what you are, you, are you? Are you too close? No, it's like zoomed in out as much as possible. And you're really, I know it feels like I'm in your face, but <laughs> I, you're, it's, it's perfect. I wouldn't do you dirty like that.